Uh, to get right into the message so that I don't take up too much time because I don't want to rush through this, uh, I want to do part two today of the series that I have begun on the idiotic concepts in religion. And uh, I will probably start off each message the same way for the sake of the DVDs and the CDs for those who order them in separate parts and then go into the actual uh, topic that I'm going to talk about. But it's important for us to understand that there's nothing more important, nothing more important to a person than their perspective. And notice how I'm saying that than their perspective about their relationship to and or their fellowship with what they perceive to be God. Now I want y'all to listen to how I'm describing all this because it's very important. I didn't say with their relationship to God. I said but their relationship or their fellowship with what they perceive to be God. This innate need, because of this innate need, because of these concepts, these ideas, opinions, doctrines, and scruples that have been developed for the sake of controlling the behavior of the masses. In fact, if you look on my Facebook page, you'll see that I posted an Episcopal priest there from Newark, New Jersey, who is telling everybody now that he's retired, now that he's retired, He's letting everybody know that hell is an invention of the church. <laughs> Couldn't so very well say that when he was active because they could remove him. But here we have a theologian who's letting us know that this whole thing of religion is nothing more than a control mechanism. It's for the sake of controlling the behavior of those who are vulnerable to the concept that God is or will be pleased or is not or will not be pleased with you if you don't fulfill a certain set of standards and rules. And you know how we do that, man. We, we, you know, we, we grow up hearing that God is angry because of our behavior. God is not pleased with something that we did. God is going to get us. They put this fear factor in us. It's really deep how that works, man, because the way we were taught, we were taught as though God's decisions about us are based on the events that take place in our lives. We were taught that God makes decisions about us based on the decisions that you make. That's what we were taught. We were taught that God does not know what we're going to do. Now we weren't actually told that. But in essence we're taught that God is getting tired of what you're doing. Like God didn't know you were going to do it. Am I making sense? The truth of the matter is, it's those who are in power that want you to behave a certain way. And the best way to get you to comply with what it is that they want you to do is to convince you that the will of God is such and such and such and such when it's really their will that's such and such and such and such. In this series that I'm doing here about idiotic concepts in religion, it is my intent, the whole purpose of this is to, as I said previously, to jumpstart your mental metabolism so that you begin to do away with thoughtlessness. I think since I've been here, and of course in the latter part of my previous pastorate before I got so 
disappointed with us as a result of trying to tell us the truth and finding out that we didn't want to hear the truth and deciding to just walk away and say, I don't want to hear that. No, I'm not receiving that. You know, it's like, why not? Disprove it. Since, I would say maybe the last 20 years at least, I have been asking people to think. One of the main themes that I used to stress mostly when I first became the pastor here was having a renewed mind and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I used to stress that all the time. Stop being thoughtless. Learn how to think. Everybody repeat after me, the most painful thing, most painful thing for most people, most people is, having to think. is having to think. Having to think is more painful than going to the dentist for some people. Having to think, man, is just painful. You know why? Because when you think, it automatically alters your paradigm. As your teacher and spiritual leader, my goal is to equip you to free yourself. Now that's really all I want to do. I want to, I want to give you what you need to free yourself. I am not trying to lead you to freedom. Did y'all hear what I said? God didn't call me to lead you anywhere. Okay, I found out that's not a good thing. Most leaders start out leading. And they look back, and where y'all go? I'm not getting put in that situation. My job is to teach you, to equip you with the knowledge necessary to free yourself. In other words, let me use another analogy. You've heard me use this before. My job is to turn on the lights in the dark room so you can find the door. And once you find the door, it's on you. Now you can stay in that room if you wish, or you can take the knowledge that you've learned and walk through that door and realize that the world is much bigger than the room you've been in. It's up to you. You see, once you free yourself, then you can be the man or woman that you were meant to be instead of living in mediocrity and a life of stagnation. Brothers and sisters, I say to you again, religion, religion has been used as an instrument for menticide. Yes. What is menticide? According to Dr. Bobby Wright, menticide is the deliberate and systematic destruction of the mind. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. The deliberate and systematic destruction of the mind of a person or a group with the goal being the extirpation, meaning the wiping out of the pulling up by the root or the complete extermination of that person or that group. When our minds are injected with idiotic concepts by way of religious teachings, we adopt and incorporate these idiotic thoughts into our viscera. We literally become, as I said previously, the walking dead. I don't know how many of y'all saw the movie Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, yeah. Night of the Living Dead. Remember all those movies? Yeah. I, I like horror movies, so, you know. <laughs> but it's amazing how these zombies would actually walk around and engage in activity without thinking. And I see so many of us doing that same thing, dressed up every Sunday, looking good 
hold offices in our churches, bishop, district elder, district missionary, minister, prophet, apostle, all these titles, Sunday school teacher, deacon, trustee, steward, you name it, and dead. Dead because they are thoughtless. They're functioning in a position or out of habit. But if you ask them why they believe what they believe, they can't even tell you. Most of us have been born or raised under the influence of some form of religious superstition. Yeah. I want to show you something. I think, uh, I think it may be Acts 22. Uh, Brother Sharon, find for me, if you will. Uh, I don't know. Acts, the, there, there's, a, there's a passage in Acts where Paul was walking through Mars Hill. I want y'all to see a, a, a verse here. And he said, I beheld as I walked through, um, I'm trying to remember the actual passage. I want you guys to see it. I beheld among your, What's the, key word? the key word is religious or superstitious. He says that I noticed that you church folk here are very religious. And I want you guys to understand that in the Bible, the Bible calls religion, the Bible calls religion superstition. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. I want you guys to see that. Oh, here it is. Acts 17, 22. Acts 17, 22. Whoever has it, read it for me. Look, use the microphone. Notice what it says. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and did what? And said, Uh huh. Yea, men of Athens. You men of Athens? I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. I perceive in all things that you are too what? Superstitious. The word superstitious is there? Superstitious. Okay, now do me a favor, minister, since you got your computer up, pull up another version. What are you on, the BibleGateway.com? Okay, pull up another version like the Living Bible. The living, living Bible translation or one of the other translations read the same verse. The Living Bible or the message? Message or Living Bible is fine. Now, of course, the Minister Herndon's version, the King James version, it uses the word superstitious. Right? Let's see what another version says instead of the word superstitious. What does it say? Did somebody, what does yours say? Yours says, he's got it. You don't have to go any further. Read it nice and loud, brother. What does it say? Uh, Athenians? I perceive that you are very religious. One version says superstitious, another version says religious. You know why, y'all? Because religion and superstition are the same thing. I didn't say that. Your Bible says it. Stevie told you about it too. Oh yeah.
Yes, you did. He said, there's superstitious writing on the wall. He, he ended his line by saying, if you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. Religion ain't the way. And yet, all of us were raised in some form of religion. Most of us were raised in a religion or a superstition called Christianity. Some of us were raised in a religion or a superstition called Mohammedism. And that's what it used to be called before it was called Islam. Most of us were raised or some of us were raised and influenced by a religion called Judaism or Buddhism or Hinduism or Zoroasterism. And the list can go on and on and on because all of it is superstition. What's deep about it is superstition was imposed on us by our parents. But they didn't mean no harm. You know why? Because they only taught us what was taught to them. You can leave that there, she's gonna need it. Here's the problem. Actually, it's a good thing, though. And that is this. The world keeps progressing. Why does the world keep progressing? Because knowledge progresses. If there's no progress in your thinking, as is in most churches, you are dead because your mind is not doing what it's supposed to do. You see, every generation adds something to the knowledge of the previous generation. Our parents taught us what they had in their intellect. My parents taught me what they had in their intellect. But you've heard me say so many times, the mind cannot teach what it does not know. So we honor our parents, we honor their memory, we honor their esteem. But when enlightenment comes, when more knowledge comes, it causes us to exchange our superstitions that we had in our youth, like the belief in Santa Claus, the belief in the tooth fairy. Y'all remember those things, right? You know, you get that, that, that piece of thread wrapped around that tooth, you know, and get distracted by your mom or your dad or your uncle, and they snatch that tooth out and, meow, and you realize it's gone, and then they, they try to make up for the trauma you just went through by telling you that the tooth fairy is going to put some money under, money under your pillow. What? Yeah. That tooth that we just pulled out your mouth is going to turn into some money. You forgot all about the trauma of having the tooth pulled. You looking for this miracle to take place. You want to go to bed early that night just so you can see this phenomenon take place and you wake up and lo and behold there's a quarter well at least for me when I was little there was a quarter <laughs> nowadays it might be a dollar I don't know <laughs> inflation you know what I mean <laughs> I remember I'd wake up and there'd be a quarter up under my pillow and I'd say whoa now that was evidence that the tooth fairy 
was real. Why would our parents do something like that? Wow. As we become older, as we gain more knowledge, brothers and sisters, it becomes necessary for us to begin to test the teachings that we received in earlier years. You should test the teachings. Y'all listen, if you've been sitting up in the same church for 15 years and you haven't tested the teachings that you received eight years ago, something wrong with you. Your mind is not doing what God designed it to do, and that's think. Test the teachings so that you can decide what you need to get rid of and what you need to hold on to. Before going any further, for those who may just be listening to this part of this series, Again, the subject is called idiotic concepts in religion. So I need to be sure that you understand what I mean when I say idiotic. I don't mean stupid. Don't be offended. It's very close to it, though. <laughs> idiotic means to show a complete lack of thought or a complete lack of common sense. The root word of the word idiotic is the word idiot. It's kind of offensive to call, call someone an idiot. But when you call a person an idiot, what you're really saying is, you don't think. But we equate it with the word stupid. An idiot is a mentally deficient person. Someone who, <laughs> my boy said we got a lot of, <laughs> so, someone who acts in a self-defeating manner. Someone who acts in a counterproductive way. One who is specifically incapable of learning. So, having said that and made that clear to you, let's continue our examination of some of the idiotic concepts in religion. And the idiotic concept in religion that I want to share with you today is called the flood. Last part one was about the fall of man. Today I want to share another idiotic concept with you called the flood. Now how many of you grew up hearing about the flood? In fact, it's really deep. They just had a flood in New Jersey a couple of weeks ago. They just had a massive flood in Japan that was, in my personal opinion, caused by the United States Department of Defense with the Hawk Project. And for those of you, it's deep because I was just sharing this on yesterday in Atlanta. And I said the heart project and the whole audience, just about the entire audience looked at me like, the what? Yeah. So I'm not going to assume that you know what I'm talking about, okay? Harp, write it down, H-A-A-R-P, write it down, harp. Harp is a weapon that the United States has in Anchorage, Alaska. Yes. And it controls weather, it's a weather modification device. Oh yeah, it causes earthquakes, it causes volcanoes to erupt, it causes tsunamis, it causes hurricanes, and for example, what happened in Haiti? Brothers and sisters, let me share something with y'all. That was too surgical. It was too precise. Okay, okay, that's not the message today. But what I was about to say is when I said the flood, you didn't think about the tsunami in Japan. When I said the flood, you immediately thought about this story we were taught about in the Bible with a man named Noah. 
Now bear with me because there are three chapters in the book of Genesis that talks about this. And I want to kind of peruse through all three chapters so y'all can hear how idiotic this thing is. Genesis 6, Genesis 7, and Genesis 8. Come on, help me out here. Readers, whoever going to read? Minister Ernie, you doing okay? Genesis, let's start Genesis, the sixth chapter. Go right ahead. And it came to pass. Now I want y'all to listen to this story. What did I say it was? Story. A story. A story. A lie, actually. Okay, but it's okay to understand that it's not a lie if you understand it's only a story. If you understand it's only metaphor, if you understand, if you understand that it's not historical, if you understand that this never happened, you'll be all right. What got us messed up is we're thinking it actually happened. And human history has been based on this story. The division in the world today is based on the outcome of the story we're about to read right now. The wars that are fought between Arabs and Jews never would have been fought if this story had never been told. Because in this story, Noah had three sons. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And Shem had two lines that came out of him, Arabs and Jews. You follow what I'm saying? And if Shem had never existed, there wouldn't be no fighting going on right now in the so-called Middle East. Because there would have never been a man named Abraham, which there never was a man named Abraham, but we were taught this happened like, you know, like the tooth fairy. Okay, and just like we believed in the miracle of the tooth fairy putting a tooth, putting money up under our pillow that was real for us, this story became real for us, but we never outgrew it. It's time for us to out look, look at somebody says, oh, it's time to outgrow the lies now. <laughs> say, look back at somebody else and say, it's time to stop supporting the lies. <laughs> Well, how do we support the lies? You tithe to it every dog on Sunday. Not y'all, y'all. <laughs> you who are watching this DVD, Reverend you who's teaching these lies, who are watching it in secret of your own office right now. Stop teaching these lies. I know you don't know no better, so learn. I had to do it, you do it. Shucks. Genesis the sixth chapter. Let's do it again. What does it say? And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Isn't that deep how, this, how they start off these stories? And it came to pass. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, it's playing with our minds. Because it sounds like it happened. Go ahead. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Now check this out now. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth. What happened? And daughters were born unto them. Of course. Of course. And daughters were born unto them. I mean, you can't have population growth without women. Right? What happened, Minister Hearn? That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men, go ahead. That they were fair. That they were good looking. I mean, some things just go without saying. It's called physical attraction. Right? Now, what would really be deep here is if the sons of God saw that a crocodile. That, now, that's worth writing about. If the sons of man saw that that horse was looking kind of good. That's something to write about. But the fact that they saw other women, that they were good looking, I mean, what else do you expect? 
But in this case, it's not talking about human men. In this case, this idiotic story, the, the sons of God are angelic beings. Y'all get this? The daughters of men are regular human women. Okay? So, you th so you're clear when you say the sons of God. Ain't just talking about like uh, the minister or, 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 or some special guy. No. These were angels, supposedly. But they didn't have wings, though. These weren't, these weren't the kind with wings now. Okay? No, I don't know. These, no, these weren't like superhuman winged creatures. I don't think, but then again, it's idiotic. Who knows? <laughs> what happened? And they took them wives of all which they chose. These angelic beings took these human women and married them. <clears throat> Go ahead. And the Lord said. Now check this out, y'all. And the Lord said. My spirit shall not always strive with man. I'm not going to keep breathing life into human beings. Go ahead. For that he also is flesh. He's only human. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a limit <laughs> on how long they should live. Because see, you know, the, previously they were supposedly living up to 600, 800, 900 years old. Got me? Okay, so God decides at this point in human development. Got this now. God, we're talking about God. Whose plan wasn't really together evidently. Because he now decides at this point in human history to put a limit on how old you can be. And that limit is 120 years. Go ahead. There were giants in the earth. Check this out now. There were giants. It comes from the word Nephilim. Which means superhuman and very tall beings. Where did these giants come from? These giants, according to this story, are the offspring these are what was born as a result of sexual intercourse from these angelic beings with human women. You got this? So if you can see in your mind two levels of existence, angelic level, human level. What happened in this idiotic story is the angels saw that these human women were fine and irresistible. So the two levels mixed and created something other than what God intended. God didn't intend for superhuman beings to exist. I love the way y'all looking at me like, You gotta understand how idiotic this is. You see, God didn't know <laughs> that these angels were gonna have sex with these females. Okay? It pulled a surprise. God, God said, hey man, this I didn't know this was gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so what happens? And also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, yes, and they bare children to them, yes, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Ah, famous mighty men like Hercules. <laughs> See, in other words, in theology, this is the explanation as to how Hercules came into existence. Apollos came into existence. Thor came into existence. These so-called Marvel comic people. 
You know Marvel Comics? You know Flash, Aquaman, all these dudes. They all came into existence as a result of this angelic and human intercourse taking place. God didn't know that was going to happen. So what happened? Go ahead. You are right. <laughs> Go ahead. Now this is deep. So now wickedness is everywhere. Got me? See, now you got to remember, if you tie this into part one, okay, everything was cool until they ate of the fruit. Okay? They ate of the fruit, and then all of a sudden they knew the difference between right and wrong, so eating of the fruit made them start doing stuff they ain't had no business doing. Got me? Go ahead. Wickedness is everywhere. So what did God do? And that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Y'all getting this? All man can do is come up with evil stuff. His mind is messed up. He got a gutter mind now all of a sudden. Right? Go ahead, read. And it repented the Lord that he made... Uh-oh, wait a minute. Now we were taught that God is not a man that he should repent. Isn't that what we were taught? But here it says God repented. It says, and it repented God that he did what? Made man on the earth. What kind of God are we talking about here? God did not know that this was going to happen. So since he, since, uh, see, this is the kind of thinking, y'all, that got us messed up. This is the kind of thinking that got us thinking that, that if we do certain things that God ain't pleased with, then God is going to adjust his program. Am I making sense? Okay, so what did God do? And it grieved him and his heart. God got grieved. Because his, his creation messed up. Go ahead. And the Lord said. Yep, God said, check this out now. I will destroy man whom I created. I'm going to destroy the human race. Wow. Go ahead. Both man and beast. Man and beast. Now why are you going to kill the animals? <laughs> They didn't have sex with the animals. The lion is still the lion. Sheep still the sheep. Bear still the bear. But God mad now. God is mad. Everybody say this. Anthropomorphism. Let me, let me change that word. It's really anthropomorphism. But everybody say this. Uh, anthropomorphic. Ideas about God. That's why we messed up. Because religion describes God as though God is human. Anthropos means like man. Man's qualities. And so what man has done is man has assigned human qualities to God. Like ignorance. Like anger. Like disappointment. God didn't know none of this was going to happen. So now God is saying, you know what? Mm-mm. Uh, Mm-mm. I'm, 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 I'm changing this. What did God do? Go ahead. And the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. Yes. For it repented me that I have made them. Yes. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, ain't this deep? <laughs> Noah... Wasn't nothing wrong with Noah. Now we read a little bit later, he was a drunk though. He loved drinking, okay? Yeah, he got so drunk, remember later on in the story, he got so drunk that he was passed out in his tent. And Ham came in and did something he wasn't supposed to do because he loved, you know, he was drunk. But 
he found favor, grace in the eyes of God. I guess God had to use somebody, right? To carry out this story here. Go ahead. These are the generations of Noah. These are the generations of Noah. Go ahead. Noah was just a man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Wow. Noah, Noah walked with God. Nobody else did now. <laughs> but Noah did. Yeah. Go ahead. And Noah begat three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Oh, now remember y'all, this is only a story. We were taught it as history. We were raised believing this actually happened. Go ahead. The earth was also corrupt before God. The earth was corrupt. Ain't that deep? The earth, not just the people. The planet itself was corrupt. What happened? See, see, see all, of, all of this is a part of setting the stage for stupidity. This is setting the stage for you to be an idiot. That's what it is. They made idiots out of us. Go ahead. And the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with violence. Go ahead. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Yes. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Wow, ain't that deep? Wasn't nobody doing right. <laughs> Go ahead. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Go ahead, keep going. And with this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. Now check out this. Now God gives Noah, right? I don't know where he got his carpentry skills from. <laughs> I don't know where he got his black and decker tools from for this, but hey, he's getting ready to build a boat. You all right? He's getting ready to build a boat. He's the only righteous man on the planet. He happens to be a builder. Not a preacher, not a teacher, a builder. A boat builder at that. Okay? Noah and his three sons are getting ready to build a boat. <laughs> Give us the dimensions of the boat, please. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The, the length of the ark will be 300 cubits. So that you guys will know, a cubit is one and a half feet. <laughs> Got me? So that means that this boat is 450 feet long. Got me? What else? And the breadth of it 50 cubits. 50 cubits wide, which means 75 feet wide. Right? Go ahead. And the height of it 30 cubits. 30 cubits high or 45 feet high. Now see this thing in your mind. Right? 450 feet long. 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Look at somebody say, that's a big boat. <laughs> and one man and his three sons built it. Got me? Go ahead. A window shall not make it to the ark. Gotta have a window. And in it, a cubit shall thou finish it above. Yes. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof. Yes. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Ah, three stories high. Go ahead. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein it is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Everything on the planet is going to die. Everything on the planet is going to die. Read. But with thee I will establish my covenant. And now ain't this deep. This is, he, he said he, he established a covenant with Abraham now, but Abraham ain't born yet. So Noah, I'm going to establish my agreement with you. Go ahead. And thou shalt come unto the ark. 
thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. You and your family, your sons and your daughters-in-law, come on into the ark bed. And of every living thing. Of now, 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 now here's where it gets good. Here's where it gets good. I want you to bring every living thing into this boat. Let's deal with this for a moment. Go ahead. Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. Now we've been taught that. We saw little stories of that. Two giraffes, two lions. Two bears, you know, we used to see pictures of that in Sunday school, right, you know, okay. But it wasn't just two of everything. It was only two of every unclean thing. Go ahead. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female. See, you see, see, go ahead. Of fowls after their kind. Birds after their kind, go ahead. And of cattle after their kind. Cattle after their kind, go ahead. And of every creeping thing on the earth. Every creeping thing on the planet. Go ahead. After his kind. Yes. Two of every sort shall come unto thee. Yes. Keep them alive. Keep them alive, go ahead. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it unto thee. You gotta have food now. You can't just go on the boat. Right? Without something to eat. See, well, they, see these, these, these are supposed to be, you know, vegetarians. See, you know, go ahead. And it shall be for the food for thee and for them. Yes. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. He told, he did what God told him to do. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Noah, mm -hmm. Come thou and all thy house unto the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Okay. Of every clean beast thou shalt take thee to be thy sevens. See? In other words, of clean beasts, take seven pairs. Every clean beast takes seven pairs. Go ahead. The male and his female. Yep. And of beasts that are not clean by two. The yes. The male and his female. Yes. Of fowls also by the air, by seven. Mm-hmm. And the male and the female to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Yes. For yet seven days and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. There's that number forty. That's a whole nother. I'll do that in another lecture. Go ahead. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Okay, go ahead. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Yes. And Noah was 600 years old. How old was he? 600 years old. You mean a 600 year old dude? Yes. Built a boat? <laughs> that, ought, that, that, hey, that, that ought to give you brothers, you know, let you know you're going to be all right, brothers. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> All right, go ahead. When the waters of the six hundred years old building a boat. <laughs> when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Yes. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with them into the ark, because of the waters of the flood. Mm -hmm. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean. Yes. And of fowls and everything that creepeth upon the earth. <laughs> They went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Wow. Go ahead. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day, the six, I'm sorry, the seventeenth day of the month. Yes. The same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. In other words, here comes the flood. Go ahead. And the windows of heaven were open. Yes. And with and the rain was upon the earth forty days, forty nights. It rained forty days and forty nights. Go ahead. In the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife. And the three wives of his sons with him into the ark. Okay. 
They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, yes. and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, mm -hmm. and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. Mm. And they went unto Noah into the ark, mm -hmm. two and two of all flesh, yes. wherein is the breath of life. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh. Not male and male. <laughs> Not female and female, but male and female. Go ahead. As God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the Lord shut him in. God shut him up in the boat. Go ahead. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. Yes. And the waters increased. Go ahead. And bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. The ark floated. <laughs> That's some deep stuff. Y'all just thought about that. He had no way of testing it, did he? Okay, go ahead. And the waters prevailed. And the and waters prevailed. Go ahead. And were increased gently upon the earth. Yes. And the ark went up on the face of the water. Yes. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. Go ahead. And all this is very repetitious, isn't it? But go ahead. Uh -huh. And all the high hills were under the whole heaven. Wait a minute now. The high hills... The high hills were covered with water? Yes. That were under the whole heaven were covered. Go ahead. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> How high is a cubit? One and a half feet is one cubit. How many cubits deep was this water? 15 cubits <laughs> 15 cubits deep was this water. 15 cubits. 15 cubits of water covered all the mountains. <laughs> That's deep, y'all. Because Mount Everest is 29,029 feet high, the highest peak. And yet 15 cubits covered Mount Everest. No, it said the whole earth. 15 cubits. Go ahead, read. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Everything drowned in 15 cubits of water. <laughs> this boat that was over 450 feet long floated in 15 cubits of water. With all these animals on it. I know we never thought about this. In fact, to be honest with you, many of us probably didn't even know the dimensions of the boat, period. Go ahead. Both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, yes. of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. Yes. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. Mm -hmm. And every living thing, every living substance was destroyed, which was on the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. Yes. And they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive. Everybody got killed. Everybody drowned. Everything drowned. Except Noah and his family and the living creatures that was on this boat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. 150 days. How many months is that, y'all? 150 days. That's how many months is that? 30 days in a month. So for five months, the earth was covered in 15 cubits, 22 feet of water. 22 feet. Go ahead. And God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters ascended. 
and the waters began to to come down. What do you call that? Um, recede, right? Okay. The, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from up the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abandoned. Okay, let's save some time now. You guys can read the rest of these chapters. Let's go to the end of the eighth chapter. Let's go maybe like maybe the last few verses of the end of the eighth chapter. I want y'all to hear how intelligent this God is. Okay. And no built an altar unto the Lord. This is after they came off the boat now, right? Yes, sir. Noah built an altar. Go ahead. And took every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings unto the altar. Now this is really deep. The whole reason why he took these animals on the boat was to save their life. Okay? So he brings them off the boat and kills a couple of them to make an offering to God. Right? Go ahead. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Oh, now this is another thing. Why is it that God smells a sweet savor or fragrance mm -hmm. out of killing? Why is it that this God requires the death of some living creature and that's considered a beautiful thing? Go ahead. And the Lord said in his heart. Check this out now. God said in his heart. I will not again curse the ground. Now wait a minute. What's really deep is who knows God said this? I mean, who knows that this God, God had a conversation with himself and said within himself to his own heart, what did he say? I will not again curse the ground anymore. For Never me. again! Never again will I curse the ground because man ain't doing right. Go ahead. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Did y'all hear this? This God who messed up. I used to be scared to talk like this. But now I'm free. <laughs> this God who messed up. Because God made man, right? So therefore, if there's a flaw in this creation, then whose fault is it? If you're making a cake and the cake falls, what did you do wrong? Maybe you slammed the door. Or, you know, I don't know what would cause the cake to fall. What, what, if it don't come out right, whose fault is it? Yours. Maybe you put the wrong ingredients in it. I don't know. Go ahead, read. Neither will I again smite any more everything living. Never again will I kill all creation. Go ahead. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. That's the end of the eighth That's the end of the eighth. Brothers and sisters, let's look at this now. I had her to read all that so we can have it in our head so when I'm talking about the story you can relate to what I'm saying. My research has shown me that if this had actually happened at about that point in time in human history, what would have been at that time, there would have been at least 1,600 species of mammals. How many did I just say? 1,600 species of just mammals. About 12,500 different kinds of birds. About 600 different types of reptiles. And at least three 
and a half million different kinds of insects. And other inferior creatures besides animalcules. An animalcule is what we call a microscopic creature. It's spelled A-N-I-M-A-C-U-L-E. Animalcule. An animalcule is so small that you literally need a microscope to see it. But it is an animal. These creatures came from all over the planet, but yet some didn't make it. There were no polar bears on the ark. There were no seals on the ark, but then again, a seal would need a seal can swim in water, right? But it's a mammal, it has to get on land sooner or later so it can get out of water and re re regenerate itself. And there was another animal that didn't make it. It's called a sloth. A sloth is the slowest mammal on the planet. They hang out in trees. They have claws like hooks. You know, I, I encourage you to just kind of look at a sloth and see how slow it moves. If the sloth would have made it to the ark, <laughs> it would have had to begin its journey at least 200 years before creation <laughs> to get to where the ark was supposedly at. This voyage lasted for over a year. Eight people, eight people attended to all these <laughs> creatures and provided food for them. Now, not just looking at the amount of figures that I just gave you, but in over a year, can you imagine how many rabbits <laughs> have been replicated? Think about it. What, where was the room for the reproduction of animals? Where was the what do you call it? The, 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 the sewerage system on this boat. Like I said, it's supposed to have covered the whole earth in how many feet? 22 and a half feet of water? But then, to make it really bad, how do you justify killing all creation? The creatures that had done nothing wrong. What is the justification for their slaughter? You see, brothers and sisters, The best way I can try to get you guys to understand what I'm truly really trying to say is we need to understand how we got messed up. When you hold concepts in your mind like this, that God can give you a word. as some preachers pronounce it. Yes. And based on what you think God is saying to you, it's all right to justify the death of. 
As long as you got these kind of belief systems in your head, you can justify just about anything. You can justify launching missiles into somebody else's land, as has been done in the last 48 hours, and just indiscriminately killing innocent people. Because God is at work. God is doing this. God is on our side. In God we trust. You see, we would, see, see, man, the only way you can do this kind of stuff is if that is the God that you believe in. If that is the God that you worship. If the God that you worship is the God that declares that everybody is wrong because a man and a woman ate a piece of fruit and justifies the death of all these people as long as those concepts are in your mind there is no hope for us you hear what I'm saying the only way that we're going to free ourselves from this mess that we're under, and I'm trying to get you guys ready for what's coming if you don't change your way of thinking. Not just you, but all of you who are listening to this. It is because of the way that we think that the world system operates the way it does and we don't do nothing. We sit back and let it happen and we say things like, well, the Bible said this was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> prophecy is being fulfilled. It's not prophecy being fulfilled. It's the sick agenda of some very powerful people who are interested in world domination. It's not the devil. You need to stop saying the devil until you can give the devil an identity. Once you can attach an image, a realistic image, to the devil, then you'll know how to deal with him. As long as you've got this concept in your head of a red dude with horns and a pointed tail, you'll never identify the devil. Am I making sense? We need to return to the awareness of the truth and facts about who and what we are. Once you return to that, brothers and sisters, all these stories that's in this manual for human control. Notice what I just identified it as? The manual of human control. That's what this is. Y'all call it a Bible. It's really the manual of human control. Once you learn how to Y'all, and I know I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to shock some. When I do what I'm getting ready to do right now, it's going to actually hit somebody in the chest. It's going to, some people are so emotionally attached to this book right here, that when I do what I'm getting ready to do, you're going to say, oh Lord. <laughs> but when you're able to take this book right here and do this to it, you won't be free. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. As long as you're carrying it under your arm. Now I don't mind you carrying it if, it's, if you're using it properly as the weapon to educate your people. And to show them how they have been enslaved. But if you hold it, if you hold Genesis through Revelation 
as, in fact, the Word of God inspired. I'm going to deal with all that in this series. Then you are in trouble. And you are a major contributor to our continued oppression. You've got to free yourself. Set yourself free from this mess. Get rid of this idiotic concepts. As I said in my clothes last week, last time I did this, return to the knowledge of who you are. Sankofa. Yes. The people who came to us with the Bible came to our land, as Bishop Tutu says. When they left the land, we had their Bible and they had the deed. You understand what I'm saying? You gotta prepare yourself for what's coming. Brothers and sisters, I can't stress to you enough, and I don't claim to be a prophet, but mark my word, in the next 18 months, stuff is gonna get so horrible in this country that if you don't reclaim your common sense, you're not going to be able to last. Did y'all hear what I said? Things are getting ready to get stupid here, man. They're launching war against Gaddafi and Libya. Let me, just, now, let me not just say Libya. North Africa, period. This country wants to dominate North Africa. They, they dominated West Africa a long time ago. They dominated South Africa a long time ago. You see, when they decided to let Mandela out of prison, notice how I said that, right? When they decided to let Mandela out of prison, they knew that there wouldn't be no threat. They knew that. Countries that can pose a threat? Gaddafi ain't nothing to play with, man. I'm telling you, Gaddafi got friends everywhere. I guess I need to be telling you this, Obama. You know that. Man, this government is going to cause a lot of our youth to die. I don't just mean in the streets, but I'm talking about the bill that Obama passed to mandate our youth serving in the military. How many of y'all saw the movie Stormtroopers? Was it Stormtroopers where, the, you know, the insects? Look at it again if you haven't seen it. And see what a citizen is. You can't even be a citizen, of course in this movie, you can't be a citizen until you give military service. That's just setting the stage of what's getting ready to happen. This, go this government is going to be snatching your children unless you separate yourself from the mess. This government is going to pass laws to snatch your children. Do y'all not know that the age of accountability is now 16 years old? Did y'all hear what I said? It was, it was 18. 16 years old now. 16. They're still babies. And we trust the devil. We trust the devil. In fact, we say in God we trust because it's on the money. I ain't talking about God. I was talking about gold, oil, and diamonds and drugs.
Brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm imploring you in my clothes. I implore you to join in with me if you got the guts to do so. Notice how I said that. Now, if you don't have the guts, not a problem. Not a problem. I'm not going to hold you responsible for being a punk. I will not hold you responsible for punking out. Okay, if, you, if you're a punk, you're a punk. Let's keep it real. If you're a soldier, if you're a warrior, you're a soldier, you're a warrior. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. Let, 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 let me finish, man. Thank you, brother. I hear you. Brother stood up in the spirit of Ursa Ma'atra. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. The, we're at the point of crisis. There was a time, I could be wrong, I think I remember this time when the nation of Islam used to roll up in a van and snatch people, take them back, get their head right, and then bring them back to where they got snatched from and say, where do you live? They said, no, you can drop me off here. No, 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 where do you live? We're taking you home. They had a cleanup campaign of cleaning up the brothers. Now they have an army called the FOI. Now, I don't mean to cause no trouble, but somebody better do some thinking. Because Gaddafi is ready to equip. Did y'all hear what I said? Gaddafi is trying to tell us black folk in America, you have enough people to have your own army. And then he turned around and said, and we will give you arms. Okay, I better ease up off that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I sing a song. What will your answer be? Can you say truthfully that you've done your part? Each day, can you say truthfully that you've stood tall as a soldier and shown someone the way? Can you say truthfully you've done your all in all? What will your answer be? Will your response be, well, I went to the village every Sunday. I showed up every Sunday. You know, I listened to Brother Ray. Yeah, he, he, he opened my eyes. Brothers and sisters. Opening your eyes is one thing. That's almost like waking up. You're in bed, you woke up, but you didn't get up. Yeah, my message lying in bed awake. A lot of us are awake, but we're still in bed. We're still in our comfort zone. We're still under the cover, under the comforter. It's time to get up now. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. But the first thing you got to do to get up is get your mind right. You got to get all this stupid stuff out of your head. Okay? Get all this whole stuff that, you know, well, you know, God ain't going to please. God is not pleased with you now. That's why we're in the shape we're in. Because we're complacent. God is not pleased with us now, man. Look at where we are as a people. Look at us. Look at our children. Look out here in the street. I close. I think it's Surah, the 13th Surah in the Quran, the 11th verse, somewhere in there. It says, plain as day, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they first change it themselves. Get this dumb stuff out of your mind. Rise up and be a soldier. Be a warrior. As my brother just said, be an Ursa Ma'at Ra. Learn to take some 
Okay. I'm going to say it. Learn to take off the head of your enemy. Brother Ray is telling us to go out and kill. No, I'm not saying go hurt anybody. Okay. You know, it's, like, it's just like this past week while I was in Atlanta, I found out there was another, another bishop in Atlanta. I put it on my Facebook page. You can read it. Another bishop molesting children in Atlanta. And guess where he come from? Eddie Long's church. One of Eddie's sons. Not his, not his biological son. I mean, you know, he's, he raised your... See, brothers and sisters, you don't understand what I'm saying. We need to have... I, I, I know preachers ain't supposed to talk like this, but I ain't a preacher. Got me? I'm a liberator, okay? We need to have something in place. And I'm not promoting violence. I'm promoting protecting our people. We need to have something in place. I don't know exactly how to say it any better way than I'm saying this. We need to have something in place that when somebody messes with our children, they understand that it's terminal. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Adults, y'all do whatever you want to do. I don't give a cheesecake about that. But when it comes to the children, we need to have something in place, man. When you mess with our children, you ought, you ought to know we're not even going to have a court case. This ain't even going to be a court matter. Because the warriors in the African community Coast to coast, border to border, the, co the warriors in the African community are going to deal with you. Now, y'all think I'm wrong for saying that? No. I don't care if you think I'm wrong or not, I just want to know. <laughs> Something needs to be put in place to where you understand if you mess. See, in Islam, it's clear. If you steal, if you steal, you lose your hands. It's understood. You follow what I'm saying? And I'm not making that up. I know what I'm talking about. I don't know how many of you maybe heard me talk about this in my previous ministry. Man, we had a, we, somebody broke in our church and stole the sound system. And a sister was outside walking the corner that night and she saw the brothers who did it. And she told us and we, I was sharing, we were sharing our building with some Muslims. And so the brothers came to me and said, Hakeem, you want us to deal with this? And I said, deal with what? He said, we got our way of handling this. I said, I don't want to know about it. That was, on a, that was on a Sunday night that happened. That Tuesday, they found the brother tied up in the basement. No hands. We, you know what? From that day forward, Brother Pew, we never had another problem. We could have left the doors unlocked. It would have been fine. Because the word went out in the city, okay, this is what's going to happen if you steal from Life Center. It needs to be understood, brothers and sisters. We got to stop playing around. We got to stop playing with, playing with the devil, man. Stop playing. Stop playing. And take charge of our community and set our people free. All right, I'm going to stop now. I'll continue with the next part of the series. Ashe. Ashe.